Let's talk further about those departing politics as this parliament ends with David Liddington, a senior minister under Theresa May, who announced today that after 27 years representing the people of Aylesbury, he's standing down. Mims Davis, the MP for Eastleigh, who's also said she's going. Carolyn Harris, deputy leader of Welsh Labour, who intends to fight on. And from Nottingham, by Anna Soubry, who likewise, having left the Conservatives, intends to fight on with Change UK. Welcome to all of you. David Liddington, let's start with you and your own decision to leave mm. politics. How far have these factors played a part? I mean, those haven't played a, a, a particular role for me. Um, as you said, I've been in the House of Commons 27 years now. I mean, for me, the key thing was, um, while I'd been happy to fight this election and spend a bit more time in the House, I felt I couldn't, in all honesty, commit myself to a further five years of a full parliament. That wouldn't be fair on my family. It wouldn't be fair on just wanting time, while I've still got a bit of energy and, 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 and vigour, to do other things in my life that have been put on the back burner because of the, po the commitment politics requires. But the current state of debate, of vitriol... Oh, it, it, it is deeply depressing. I mean, when I was leader of the House of Commons, I mean, it was shocking to me to sometimes see the material, but to talk particularly, not just to women, but particularly to women of all political parties, and find the levels of abuse, anti-Semitic, misogynistic, racist, uh, threats, uh, uh, trolling from people online saying, I know where your children go to school. Um, you know, people who in receipt of that understandably are fearful. All MPs have changed their practice with regard to constituency surgery since Joe Cox's murder. Um, some people have discontinued open surgeries altogether. It's um, a bit of an indictment of our society that we're in that state. And what I have seen is good people in all political parties, younger people being deterred from getting into politics in the first well, place. That's bad news. talk about that in a moment. Ms Davis, talk us through your decision. Well, mine was purely a personal decision because my life had changed since I'd come to Parliament. I would like to stay and uh, carry on through to 2022. That wasn't wasn't to be. And I've been very, very privileged to, to serve Eastleigh as the accidental MP. I went for a, an interview in a pretty difficult, unwinnable seat, and David was by my side uh, in those days as well. And it's been brilliant. I've had huge and interesting opportunities. But there is no doubt that it's been a very challenging couple of years. For many colleagues, I count myself very lucky that I've not experienced that. But it has affected how I've been able to do the job. Uh, so those open surgeries, for example, which uh, having been a local councillor before, uh, I was very able to do. You just can't do now, particularly as a women MP. Uh, but I must say, um, I have had a shorter career than David, but I actually have had incredible opportunities. And this does worry me tonight, that people will feel that there potentially isn't a chance to come to Parliament and make a difference. I think we must remember, your career could maybe be short or long, but you can be there and make a difference locally and nationally. Well, Anna Subri, you're hoping still uh, to be making a difference. You're fighting on. Did Nikki Morgan's decision tonight come as a surprise to you? You know her well. Yes, I'm quite surprised by Nikki's decision, actually. Um, I thought she was going to stay on. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about the conversations that we've had in the past. Uh, I mean, I know that she and I have often talked about um, certainly when we were you know, more aligned politically in our views on Brexit, um, about the appalling... Not, it's, not, it's not just abuse. I think it's really important. I mean, I've been abused ever since I got into um, Parliament because I was a Conservative in 2010 and I got terrible abuse from Labour. I mean, let's not mince our words about this, but it's, it's not just the abuse, it's the actual threats to your safety and to your family. I mean, my... I get quite emotional about this, I think it is just so appalling, but my 85-year-old mother was sent a letter to her home threatening her, threatening her safety. My partner received an um, in-sympathy RIP card saying, now that your partner is dead, we're coming after you, and that was sent to his home. Shocking. Um, and these are real threats, and Nikki has had real death threats, as I have had. We've both had a number of people who've gone to prison. And what's remarkable, and I'm going to be very, un uh, very, very frank about this, has been a pitiful lack of response in Parliament 
from very senior uh, politicians, including, I'm afraid to say, the previous Prime Minister, who I don't think really understood how bad it was, and indeed Boris Johnson's outrageous comments to Paula, which, and again, I take no pleasure for saying this, but, you know, I'm quite a tough cookie. I was reduced to tears that night in the House of Commons. I had to leave the chamber. I was so upset when Paula stood up and said what she did and Boris Johnson said humbug. And I thought this rather ridiculous man simply has no idea how his language is stoking up anger that then and turns into threats, real life death threats to All real right. people's safety. Carolyn, I mean, you've had an experience just today, is that right, of, of being threatened? Well, I wasn't threatened. I was coming home from Westminster, going to my flat, and I came out of um, carriage gates, and there were two who would, you would have assumed would be on the same side groups, um, and they squared up to each other. It was quite extraordinary, really, because people just carried on and said nothing. In fact, one youngster was filming it with a commentary, um, and then they squared up to each other, and then they separated, and then they all started chanting Tommy Robinson songs. It was a more surreal experience. And do you feel that a genie is out of the bottle in the sense that uh, there are far too many individual uh, threats uh, on social media or, uh, for them to be responded to individually? It's impossible for the police, isn't it? To... It is. I mean, I've come, when I came into politics, it was just before we lost your Cox. So I've never known any other environment except this hostility, which is really unpleasant. And very many times I've had to send stuff to the police and nothing actually breaks the law. It's insulting, but it's not criminal. David, just pick up quickly on Anna Subri's uh, remark there that Theresa May didn't seem to appreciate the seriousness of this problem. Is that a fair criticism, do you think? I, mean, I, I would disagree with, with, with Anna on that, that point, though. Obviously, Anna's obviously had, you know, I know, sort, sort of vile personal experiences from trolls and, and, and other uh, abusive communications. I, I do think that there is a really heavy responsibility on political leaders of all parties and also of editors to desist from the use of language which inflames This passions. is the headlines. It's a headline. You know, and you enemies get of the people. traitors, enemies mm. of the people, all this rubbish. And I understand why people think it's saying, oh, this is just well, exaggerating let's... to make a point. But actually, the... The people who used to write in green ink in a lonely attic, but who now go online and say things and make threats that they would never dare make to your face no. or put in a letter with their name uh, signed at the bottom, go ahead and do just well, that. Let's, let's move this on a bit, because how far is this about the direction of politics within your respective parties? So the, the extent to which uh, old-style, uh, moderate or pro-European Tories may long, no longer be welcome if you style yourself as a Brexit party. Uh, I want to quote something one of your former uh, Europe Minister colleagues tweeted tonight about your resignation. She said there will be no room for decent, sane moderates in the Conservative Party anymore. Well, I, I disagree with that. Um, I, I know who you mean. And I, I've seen the tweet and, and she was a great colleague. But the, um, I think that I look at my own local party um, and I look at the way members of Parliament talk to each other in, in, in my... And, and you, you still have that wish to make things work. My county, Buckinghamshire, you've got me, you've got Dominic Grieve, who's been at one end of the spectrum, Steve Baker at the other end of the Tory spectrum, in adjacent constituencies, and the Speaker next to us all, mm. and we get together, we meet on friendly terms, we talk about local issues in particular, without any animosity, but I think that it's really important that both big political parties demonstrate as well as just just speak in terms of their being broad welcoming churches i think that's the only way for either the big parties to attain majorities stable but in neighbor i mean you've got diane Hubbard being attacked by the, the far right uh, mm. probably the, the biggest single number of I a think case of abuse attacked by everyone if i'm honest well but, but then you've also got the sort of corbyn cult phenomenon as mm. some would call it uh, uh luciana berger leaving the party uh louise Alman. Uh, people like that mm. who, who, who've had the pylons from the left. Mm. What, I mean, what can Labour do to address that issue? I mean, it's, among... issue, it's, it's, it's an, we, we know we've got a problem and it's something that we are looking at. And, you know, I mean, I've never had any uh, abuse from within my political party or from within the Tory party. My abuse has come from people who, David have said, would normally have written in green ink 
and are now sitting behind a keyboard. I mean, they're not mm. keyboard warriors, they're Sorry. keyboard cowards. Because they would never, ever, under any circumstances, come and say what they say to your face. Uh, Anna Subri, do, do you think that what we're seeing has uh, been exacerbated by Brexit, or is Brexit itself a feature of the so-called culture wars and the radicalisation of politics here? I, I think it's both, but I do have to pick up David Liddington, who is a, a, a wonderful uh, parliamentarian and no doubt a great MP, when he talked about Dominic Grieve. It was profoundly ironic that he mentioned Dominic. Dominic Grieve has effectively been expelled along with... Um, my dear friend and neighbour Ken Clark and even Philip Hammond and David Gork have been expelled from the Conservative Party. It is no longer the wonderful broad church that it was. It's one of the reasons I left. And just turning to the comments about the Labour Party, we have not seen that level of anti-Semitism and unpleasantness so prevalent in the Labour Party until the election of Jeremy Corbyn and I have to say he seems he appears to tolerate it. The reality is both political parties have moved to the extremes. Now it's partly because of Brexit but it's partly because of those underlying causes that may have led to Brexit. Either which way it is wholly unacceptable and it is a feature I believe of the broken nature of our politics is why so many people in this forthcoming election I think will abandon the two main parties and look to I like to think strong independent voices like mine but that, that those of us that sit in the centre the moderates the sensibles. David Liddington I mean do, do, do you leave with a bit of taste I mean when you see the treatment that Amber Rudd or some of your other colleagues. Oh, have I, had I, the hands I mean, look, I've, I've made no secret of the fact that I disagreed with the decision to uh, make that particular vote a vote of confidence, and, and as, a, as, a, as a result of that, to, to withdraw, withdraw the whip. I, I very much regret that. Um, I think that we have to get back within the Conservative Party to remembering that there have always been honourable divisions of opinion on Europe amongst decent Conservatives. A lot of my time in Parliament, it was people who were on the Eurosceptic right of the party, who were in the minority, who were defying John Major, <laughs> David Cameron. But, but you know, we didn't talk about chucking, chucking them out. So I exactly. think one needs to work, as the PM said, and I hope that was a harbinger of the future today, it's got to be back to the One Nation tradition. Lastly, we're almost out of time, but I just wanted to ask you your uh, your survival guide for new MPs. What would you say you should or shouldn't do in terms of trying to protect yourself in this climate? So I don't think anybody comes into this job knowing how long they've got. So use your time very wisely. Mm. And when I was a sports minister, I stood up against racism on the pitch and being mm. moderate in our language. We should have that on the pitch, on the park, on the telly and in the House of Commons. And we okay. will see a better community for it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Minister Davis, uh, finishing us off there.